Now, it's not very often, really, that one gets the chance to sit down and chat with three legends of the game who also happen to be master tacticians, master strategists. It gives me great pleasure, really, to introduce the three gentlemen who form the think tank of the very successful IPL franchise, the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Joining us today, head coach Tom Moody, team mentor VVS Lakshman and bowling coach, the one and only Mutaya Murlidharan. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. An absolute pleasure having you all together here for this interview. Now, before I start, I want to find out something. I want to find out who is the strictest of the, out of the three of you. Who is the one man that the players are really scared of behind the scenes, which we don't get to know about. Is that you, Tom? It looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm looking to my left. Yeah. There's no one on my right, but I'm looking to because my Levius, left. Levius, I know, is a great sport, but is he also... I'm like also a, looking to my left. ...a taskmaster. <laughs> I'm looking to my left. <laughs> Murli, it's you, isn't it? It's, you know, nobody's strict because no he, he's, we are not a schoolmaster or somebody <laughs> because uh, we all there to help them. Right. That's all uh, our duties because... Uh, I think uh, nobody's strict because they can come anytime. They are not scared about us or anything right. because uh, we are very friendly with the uh, players and uh, they can ask anything they want. It can be stupid or it can be very interesting <laughs> or anything <laughs> can be. So it's not a problem. No, this was a bit of a selfish question because I wanted to know who is the strictest so that I could direct all my easy questions toward that person. But no, I'm joking. All right. Uh, I'll want to begin this interview, gentlemen, by asking all three of you the same question. If you had to describe the Sunrisers Hyderabad campaign in IPL 2018 in one word, what would that word be, Tom? I, I think uh, collective, I think, mm. is one word I'd like to use. Right. I, I, you know, and I'm, I use that word because I think we, we rely on each other. We mm. don't rely on any particular person. Mm. Um, so I'd like to think that uh, not only the playing 11, um, you know, everyone in the squad mm. is uh, very much involved in our campaign. So mm. it's a collective effort. Collective, Vivius. Yeah, you? I'll uh, to add to that. You know, I agree totally with Tom. Uh, commitment. commitment. You know, commitment from each and every member of the squad, whether they're playing, they're not playing, in all the three departments. Commitment from the support staff, mm. uh, and also the entire uh, family of Sunrisers. You know, because it's not only the players or the support staff, but all the other. Uh, people who contribute in scenes. yeah behind the scenes and they play a very important uh, role you know logistics to manage the sponsors mm. uh, to arrange interviews like with, with, with you what we're doing so I think it's commitment from each one of them and that's not only this year mm. it's been there since the time Sunrises franchise mm. has come into IPL absolutely so collective commitment only for you I would say most than um, these two also more important but thing is most important is happiness yeah. So because uh, you have to be happy. Right. See, when you're happy only, you do the right thing. You perform thing. well on the field also. And you do the right thing for yeah. not only performing. Yeah. It's about everything you do right when you're happy. If you're not happy, if you're so It's sore, a state of mind. Yeah, if you're not happy, yeah. you're not going to do the right thing. Right, fantastic answer. Happiness, really. And, you know, all three answers, gentlemen, brings me to my next question, Tom. Fantastic position to be in currently in the, in the IPL, top of the table. Uh, next match against Delhi. And I suspect you guys are not going to take your foot off the pedal. That intensity that we've seen from you through the season will remain. Yeah, look, absolutely. I, I think we feel um, that we can continue to improve. Um, yeah, look, it's nice to be in the position that we're in, but we respect that and we don't take it for granted. And, yeah. and you know, for me, from a coach's perspective, it's, it's about improvement. Looking at the various aspects of our game, we can continue to, to develop and improve because... Really, you want to be peaking at the right time. Uh, yes, we've got uh, a number of results our, in our favour for in the first 10 games, but I still feel that we can improve. Mm. Uh, so I'm not looking so much at the outcome as in the wins losses. I'm looking at how we're playing. Mm. You know, what are we doing when we're batting? What are we doing when we're fielding? And what are we doing when we're bowling? Can we improve in any of those areas? Mm. And the answer is simply yes, mm. in all three areas. Absolutely. That really is the hallmark of any champion team, isn't it? Even if you're at the top of the table and doing really well, there's always room, always scope for improvement. That's what champions like to do. Even in individual sports, you see the likes of Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, always wanting to be the best. VVS, as team mentor, I wanted to ask you, you know, some mentors have it easy. 
uh, because there are senior, mature players in the team who are willing to take on a lot of responsibility makes the mentor's job easier. Some mentors have it a little tough because you know they have to look towards the team and pick out players who they would like to pass on responsibilities to. Which category do you fall into? I suspect the first one. Yeah, I think the first one. You know, and I think it's not only about uh, the seniors or the juniors in the team. I think it's important, and that's one of the important criteria we as uh, uh, a team you know go out in the auction is to mm. pick a player who fits into so the it starts from the auction onwards absolutely yeah. you yeah. know picking the right player who fits into the uh, environment uh, uh, or the character the sunrises team he is mm. you know and it's very important criteria for us it's not only the skill set mm. so i think it's very easy as a mentor to interact with them right murli my next question for you, now I know that coaches and, and, and strategists, they don't like to reveal strategies, but there's one question I have to ask you. Looking at the way the IPL campaign this year has gone, the Sunrise Hyderabad, one of the standout features has been how you have been able to defend even very low totals. You've been able to frustrate the batsmen. What are the bowlers doing? What is the secret mantra? <laughs> Not me defending, the bowlers <laughs> are defending. <laughs> I'm sitting in the um, dugout. See, the thing is, best thing is uh, what we planned not from the start because we were from whenever we involved, we want a strong bowling attack. Mm. That's our idea. Tom and Lakshman and me always think bowl bowlers win matches. Yes. So, batsmen can cutely get 180. If we can't defend that 180, it's very difficult. So, that's, um, that's what we pick for bowlers. We go for young, good bowlers. We went for auction and we make sure our bowling side is much better right. than any other side so that's we uh, make sure so when it comes to uh, the players individual players see when we pick they are good enough to play in the IPL mm. and good enough to play in the 11 anytime mm. any given time because everyone can't play right because the chances has to come only three four four five bowlers has to pay right. so five bowlers we have about 10 bowlers 10 11 12 bowlers to back up them. Mm. So we have a big backup. So that's one advantage we got in our team. Right. Talking about the uh, the bowling aspect of the Hyderabad team, Tom, has there been any match this season where even you were surprised and you went, wow, you know, that's fantastic that we managed to do that. I'm really proud of this team. Any match that made you, you know, sit back and say that? Oh, look, there's been many efforts that have been impressive, um, but nothing has surprised me. Mm. Um, because I've got total confidence and trust in, in that playing 11. Uh, and, you know, you just get that uh, feeling inside that, you, you know, that group of players out there competing mm. uh, don't want to lie down. And I, mm. I think that's another great attribute of, of the Sunrises over the, over the years is that we're a side that hasn't given in. Mm. Um, yes, we've lost games. Of course we lose games and we, 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 we'll lose games moving forward. But... It's one accepting that loss and putting it into perspective, mm. uh, and I think that's allow that allows players to go out there and compete mm. in those contests where you may be below par and right. you're having to defend totals where everyone thinks, well, you know, let's throw everything at this. Mm. As Murali said, we have we've got the skills. The bowlers have got uh, very clear, uh, you know, role clarity. They know exactly where their roles are and what they need to do, and uh, you go out there and let them, you know, do their thing. Was it a collective team management decision to appoint Kane Williamson as, as captain? And I'm asking you this because he's done a fantastic job. His strategies have been spot on. Most cricket experts are really praising uh, his captaincy skills. Of course, batting-wise, he's, stand, he's standing out as well. But was it a collective team management, the first name that uh, crossed your mind when you had to look for a new captain? Absolutely, yes. You know, to us, it was a no-brainer. Mm. Um, you know, Kane's been part of the Sunrisers family for a couple of years. We, we know his qualities as a cricketer. Mm. We know the qualities uh, of him as a character. Mm. That's why we wanted to retain Kane mm. out of the auction. Uh, uh, not only because of those two things, but also like we have in every role in our side, a backup strategy. Mm. You know, no one was to predict that, uh, you know, what was going to happen to David Warner in South Africa. You know, yes, there was a possibility that Warner could have broken a thumb, you know, in a test match leading into the IPL and then he would have been out. So that's why it's important you have that backup strategy. And Kane was always in that position as not only a class player, class character, but also a genuine leader. Absolutely. And of course, his batting has been a standout feature as well. What, 5.50s already this season. VVS, uh, 
again from a team mentor's perspective, it's must be very impressive to see the way Kane has stepped up to the plate because here's someone, of course, he has uh, international captaincy experience, but suddenly uh, handed the, the captaincy uh, of the team and he's really stepped up to the plate. I'm not surprised with, uh, again, uh, with the way he captained or mm. the way he batted. You know, he was looking for this opportunity and mm. we as management always felt that, you know, a quality player, a class player like Kane is mm. not able to play consistently in the playing level and that's the challenge of, again, IPL. You've got mm. only four overseas players and you have to have uh, other players fit in the combination, mm. you know, and uh, whenever he got an opportunity, he definitely did well for us in the last couple of years. But this time, it was a genuine opportunity, mm. not only for Kane, the captain, but Kane, the batsman. Yeah. And he's, he's a class player, you know, when someone has 18 test centuries at such a young age, getting hundreds against all the opposition mm. in all the three formats, uh, he, he's got brilliant technique, his situational awareness is brilliant, mm. and then he backs his game. Murli, as bowling coach, do you think Kane is really one of the toughest batsmen to bowl to? At least, you know, in the IPL currently? Because he's he can always somehow manage to outwit and outthink the bowler more often than not. Yeah, definitely. Because his technique is so good mm. against spin and fast bowling. And he knows uh, when to defend mm. and when to attack. So, that is the plus point of uh, Kane. Because, um, so coming to Kane, because we were... Uh, we wanted him very much in the team because when in the auction also we went all out for him because we know because he's a future mm. because for sunrises because when we bought first time also uh, I was so surprised nobody bid for him because first auction and we were we were very happy to get him right and also last three years whatever given opportunities if you take his stats mm. he has scored more fifties whenever he got a chance he got but only opportunity he didn't get is because he couldn't play because Warner was playing really well and because open shaker was opening so he couldn't get into a slot yeah. so this year the opportunity came as to captain and he knows he's going to play all 14 15 games yeah. then as a player it's more confidence right. so that's why this uh, you see he was a great player mm. but he didn't get opportunity from us right. now this year he's got the opportunity he knows he's going to Let's play once you the player happen. knows he's going to play the 14 matches is going to perform. Right. It's high praise really coming from the, the most successful test wicket taker of all time, you know, for Kane Williamson. And, and since we are talking to Murli, I want to ask VVS and Tom this question. When Does Murli bowl regularly in the nets? Are, are, the bat, are some of the batsmen really scared of facing him? Not scared, but other batsmen, what I see, he bowls still yeah. in the nets. You know, you can't stop him from bowling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other batsmen, in fact, relish and cherish playing the great Muttai Mulidharan yeah. because it's a great opportunity for them, especially the uncapped Indian batsmen. Yeah. Because while growing up, they've seen Murli every time playing for Sri Lanka, yeah. picking up five wickets, you know, picking winning matches for Sri Lanka. And suddenly, they're interacting with him exactly. there with right him there. <laughs> yeah and when he bowls in uh, in the nets i think he's still very very impressive sometimes we feel that can he go out and do that for us <laughs> in the middle as well absolutely now since we're talking about the the bowling aspect of it i wanted to talk to murli about rashid khan now here's someone who we know has done really well in t20 leagues across the world so we won't talk about that what i wanted to talk about was how good a test player do you think this exceptionally talented youngster can evolve into now that Afghanistan has got test status? In fact, India will be playing their first test against Afghanistan uh, uh, next month. How good a test bowler do you think Rashid can be? It's a different type of uh, cricket because uh, Rashid is a different, totally different leg spinner because you mm. can't see uh, one leg spinner like him because he's something different and nobody has seen mm. uh, because he knows his strength. But uh, in a shorter format, because you are looking for runs, mm. right, okay? Every time you have to look in for runs because you have to score at least in a T20, eight runs and over yeah. to at least to get it in a, in a one day, at least you have to score five and a half, six runs, yeah. right, okay? In test cricket, only thing is you don't have to score like that, yeah. right? Only thing is you can sit on it. So that's the challenge he's going to face. What is it like, uh, Tom, to coach uh, Rashid? Because uh, he is very young, he's what, 19, but he seems very mature. At least when we see him on television and when he's bowling and how he's trying to outthink the batsman, he seems like he has a mature head on his shoulders. What's it like to coach someone like that who has natural talent and a lot of it? Yeah, look, he has got a lot of natural talent, but what he's got is a lot of drive. Mm. Um, yeah, he's a very driven character. Mm. Um, we've only we've just seen that over the last 12 months, the way he's transformed himself physically. Mm. You know, he is today uh, a lot fitter, stronger uh, cricketer than he was 12 months ago. So let's forget about the bowling side mm. of things. He's recognised that 
for him to continue to grow as a cricketer, he needs to constantly improve. So he's, he's in better physical condition this year than he was last year. And he wasn't in bad condition last mm. year, but he's in superb condition and now. Um, so he's, he's self-motivated, he's mm. a driver. Um, yes, on the outside, he may look calm, but like any, any player, whatever age they are, they, you know, they have their challenges. Um, and Rashid, just referring to, to, to Murali's comment about Test cricket, I, I think you know, he will adapt to Test cricket, mm. but the biggest obstacle for him will be patience. Yeah. Um, for a spinner, um, you know, the, the, the key to success, in my view, in, is being a good test cricketer, if you've got the skill, is to have the patience to yeah. match the skill. And if he, he ha can create uh, the habit of patience in the longer form, he'll be absolutely fine. Who is the biggest prankster in the team? I mean, when you have to think, we have to think of someone who always cracks the jokes, is always pulling someone else's leg. Who, who is that character? I think there are a lot of uh, pranksters, you know, and, and the environment in the dressing room is very relaxed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of banter uh, happening between the players. Uh, and, and importantly, I would like to tell the overseas players mm -hmm. also a part of that banter, which is really good to yeah. see. And that's something which, again, we are very lucky mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, it's not only the Indian players who have the banter and there's a separate group of overseas. It's like a family. Right. Uh, but if you want to pick one or two, I think uh, Shikha hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Bipul Sharma. Achha. Bipul is yeah. our uh, finance uh, committee chairman <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's got a great sense of humor. And right. uh, when these two guys are in their elements, I think the, uh, the atmosphere is very, very light. You know? and yeah. Uh, by, by default, both of them being from North India, yeah. I've got that uh, uh, ability to make others laugh. Yeah. So these two guys, uh, not to forget even someone like uh, Sid Kaul and Bhuvneshwar Kumar. Okay. Bhuvneshwar Kumar looks Bhuvne very serious, yeah. but he's got a dry <laughs> sense of humor. As coaches, is it sometimes difficult to, you know, uh, say you're uh, in the middle of a meeting and there's some serious talk going on and someone cracks a joke. Is, is, that, is it difficult sometimes to, you know, keep the order? Well, uh, never happens doesn't in the happen. team meeting. <laughs> doesn't yeah, happen. In, in That's a team meeting. Uh, it might happen in your classroom, but yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't happen in the <laughs> team meetings. Yeah. So I think that's again very important. Uh, and we can't forget the man on the left. Yeah, you know, he's got a great sense of humor <laughs> and uh, his interactions yeah. with the players, you know, everyone enjoys that. You know, the banter he has when we are traveling in the bus or with the players is amazing. But when it comes to team meetings, yeah. everyone are focused. You know, on match day, the straight away, right from the team meeting, they have got their game face on, you know, yeah. and that's so important is to switch on and switch off, yeah. but never ever uh, they, there is a lot of tension in the dressing room. Even when you're under pressure in the dugout, there's a relaxed a, a, a atmosphere there. You know, there's right. a lot of positivity. Well, on that note, uh, we will take a quick break uh, on the show. But when we come back, uh, just a little bit more with the three legends that we are interviewing here. Tom Moody, Vivius Lakshman and Mutaya Mulidharan. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. You're with NDTV 24-7 and we are in conversation with the Think Tank, the three gentlemen who form the Think Tank of the Sunrisers Hyderabad team, Tom Moody, Vivius Lakshman and Mutai Mulidharan. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us here. I wanted to ask you about the season looking ahead. Now, Hyderabad, of course, top of the table, but you would want to finish in the top two as well uh, after the league stage is over because then that gives you a second crack at the cherry. So, going ahead, the strategies in terms of taking on opposition in the remaining matches? Yeah, look, every franchise uh, ideally wants mm. to be firstly in the top four mm. and secondly, if possible, secure a top two position mm. for the obvious reasons. Yep. Um, my, and this may sound cliche, but you know, I'm motivated and driven, uh, which I mentioned earlier in the show, is, is about improvement. Mm. Um, you know, and I don't look about, you know, look ahead and sort of think, oh, we must beat Delhi or we must beat Chennai in our mm. next game or we must, you know, win our last game against KKR at home. Mm. To me, I break it down into process and that is what, what is it we need to do to improve on previous games or in our past performance against Delhi 
What is it we need to work on? Where do we need to improve? Mm. So they're the measures for me. When a team plays Hyderabad these days, now what we've seen happen over the last couple of seasons is that the Sunrisers of Hyderabad have really transformed into a very formidable unit. Now, you, you listen to commentators when they talk about uh, a match uh, that Hyderabad is playing or you listen to other experts or even fans watching the matches, they all talk about Hyderabad as the team to beat or at least one of the teams to beat. What was the transition like as when you came together as a think tank? What was that process like when you said this is what we want to be someday? Yeah, because we were trying this for a long time and we got it also because uh, last three or three, three season mm. also we had a very good team and everyone uh, think about our team when you're playing twice, uh, how to beat us. Mm. So, see, we might not have big, big X factors like you know, big players, big names and everything. But as a team, mm. we are a very collective unit because to win a match, uh, you can have great two, three batsmen and they can smash a 180, but you need the bowlers to <laughs> defend that also. Right. So, like that, our is, is a puzzle. Mm. Like, you know, each one has each duties to do. So, you not seen, see, I was just talking to today also, Tom, about Shakib. Mm. Everyone doesn't talk about him. But what contribution he gives to the team is more value than somebody getting 80 runs in mm. a T20. Mm. Because get a two wickets and get about 20 runs mm. and that is will win the match. So like that, everyone is doing their part mm. small ways. Mm. Because not uh, reflecting like someone is getting 100 and winning, that is a danger for the team. Someone right. is one lonely winning is a danger. Mm. Some collectively winning is a good team. That was right. the Sunrisers are the strength, not because people are scared about us or not. Mm. People not even scared about us. Even they will thinking we are easy go team. Yeah. But when you play yeah. as a pack, exactly. we are strength. I think that's underestimated that, that point that Murley made yeah. that the value of you call them the reserves, but mm. you know your your depth of your squad, the value of those players you, you, you must have a, a, a situation where they're giving, not taking. Right. And, and, and to me, you need the personalities and, and, and skills, obviously, sets of players that are helping mm. the playing 11 continue to, to develop and grow and challenging mm. players in that playing 11 instead of drawing and sapping energy away from that playing 11 because mm. They're frustrated, they're not playing, they're watching every game, they're sitting in hotel rooms getting depressed and frustrated and you know, they're probably one of their best players for their country or wherever it may be. And you know, that, that, that negative energy can influence the side. And I think mm. that uh, if you can flip that around and have those players creating positive energy, mm. I think it, uh, it goes a long way. Tom Moody, Vivyas Lakshman, Mutamuli Dhan, thank you so much gentlemen. It was an absolute pleasure interviewing you today. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.